This is the Simpick. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star today's show is yet another new wheel rim by Moza Racing. What? Another new wheel rim, new wheel bases, new pedals, a new wheel rim. Moza are on fire. Now, this is the new FSR wheel rim, and at first glance, it could easily mis be mistaken for their previous wheel, the GS wheel, because they do look a lot alike, but this is the new FSR wheel, and it is a much upgraded version of that previous wheel. The Moza Racing FSR wheel rim goes for $650, and again, it does share many features and does resemble that previous wheel quite a bit. But the biggest difference is that new 4.3 inch color display. The Moza Racing FSR wheel rim does come packaged just like all the other products that we've seen from them in those very distinct and very nice two piece blue and white boxes with nice cut out interiors protecting the Moza bag wrapped wheel. Also along with the wheel rim is a sticker kit to label the functions of the buttons and dials as well as mini pads or paddle shifter silencers for those who don't like the added noise of magnetic shifters. The Moza Racing FSR wheel rim is a 280 millimeter formula or open wheeled styled wheel rim that is compatible with all of the Moza bases. The FSR wheel rim starts off with a 5mm thick carbon fiber plate with the Moza Racing logo at the center of the wheel. The backside cover or backbone of the rim is a CNC machined black aluminum case which is an upgrade over the GS model. On each end are four plastic grips that are covered in black perforated leather. You can see that the grips are made in two pieces, much like Fanatic wheels, with a noticeable seam down the side of the grip. The face of the FSR wheel rim has a combination of 10 backlit buttons, two mini hat switches, and five 12 position rotary dials as well as two thumb activated sideways or vertically mounted rotary dials with those two actually pushing in. By my count, that is a total of 36 mappable controls. The backlit buttons are programmable in color and each one has a different designation on it to help remember its function. These are typical sim racing steering wheel buttons that are unshielded and have a fairly light touch to them when being pressed in. The mini hat switches are four way plus press in and are also very light to the touch with a metal top giving them a little bit of a high end feel. The forward facing rotary dials have very distinct detents between each of their 12 positions. These rotaries have a high quality feeling aluminum tip with grooves and a cutout to see the position indicator sticker underneath them. The final controls on the front side of the wheel are the vertical rotary knobs. These are perfectly positioned to rotate up or down with the flick of your thumb without removal of your hands from the wheel. With their positioning, they are very easy to operate, but they do have a fairly heavy and distinct click between positions and the knobs are also made of aluminum. As we mentioned, the center display is the biggest noticeable difference between this wheel and the previous GS wheel. It is the 4.3 inch color display. This display is 800 by 480 resolution and has 15 different color layouts that can be selected or even better, cycled through on the fly. Just above that display is the programmable continuous light rev strip that we've seen on other Moza wheels. Surrounding the display and the rev strip and giving the wheel a bit more flair is a plastic bezel trim piece. On the back side of the wheel is that CNC machine case that gives the wheel a little more of a professional feel over the plastic back of the GS rim. There is another Moza Racing logo on the center back and then the familiar NRG style 10 ball bearing quick release in all black. At the center of this quick release is the newer T-shaped 11 pin layout that we saw on the R5 base. On each side of the back are the paddle shifter assemblies made out of CNC machined aluminum. There are four paddles in total, all of which are made of three millimeter thick carbon fiber. Each of the paddles pivot on plastic bushings for smooth and quiet travel with the upper two being magnetic paddle shifters and the lower two being spring resistant levers. The final thing to talk about on the FSR wheel rim is on the back side, that being that phone jack, which actually allows for this to be a USB plug and play style wheel, meaning that it could be used with any wheel base on the market as long as you have a compatible quick release, which is an upgrade 
or a new feature that we haven't seen on any of the Moza wheel rims in the past, no longer quite as proprietary as they used to be. So before we get out and use this wheel, let's go over some of the measurements of the wheel and some of the things that you need to know about it, starting with the fact that we did mention it's a 280 millimeter wheel rim that is about 11 inches. That is narrower than the previous GS wheel rim by Moza Racing, which comes in at 300 millimeters, making this one a little bit smaller on the open wheeled side of things. Now the grips are also pretty small, but they have a really good shape to them. They're about 26 millimeters or a hair over an inch wide across the front and about 36 millimeters or 1.4 inches front to back. The paddle shifters are also on the smaller side of things with the paddles themselves being about 55 millimeters or two and an eighth inches long. And when activated, the shifters pull in about 5.5 millimeters or almost a quarter of an inch. The lower levers are even smaller at about 35 millimeters or 1.4 inches long and have a longer throw than the shifters which ends up being about 12 millimeters or almost half an inch. To use some of the functionality of this wheel rim, you will need to use the Moza Pit House software. And at this point, I'm assuming you're probably still using a Moza base with this wheel rim. So it does work or is compatible with the R5, the R9, the R16, and the R21. And in my case, I'm mounting this to my R16 wheelbase. Once plugged in and recognized, the Moza software will update the firmware of the wheel rim and then you're up and running. Now within the Moza Pit House software, you can actually control the way the wheel operates and looks. Some of the things that you can actually control are the way the clutch paddle modes, joystick modes, indicator light operation mode, indicator light display mode, and brightness. You can also adjust the measuring units for metric or imperial. And then from the wheel rim itself, you can actually on the fly control the way the wheel operates and looks as well. Things like degrees of rotation from 360, 540, 720, and 900 degrees. You can also change the display or which of the 15 displays that are being shown on the wheel. And you can also change the color of the backlit buttons individually using the key combinations for the wheel rim. And now it's time to put this wheel on my rig and see how it performs out on track. And as I've said before, at this point you probably know I'm such a huge fan of this NRG style quick release. It just brings me so much satisfaction every time I put one of these wheels or take one off my rig. They're so super easy to use. It is such a strong, rigid connection. Once on the base and in my hands, the first thing that struck me is that this wheel does feel small. 280 millimeters or 11 inches, it's smaller than my GS wheel rim for comparison. At first, it felt a little bit twitchy or super quick response, but that was a lot more of an adjustment from coming from a larger wheel, and after a few laps, it got that natural feel. With that said, I do feel this wheel is far better suited for faster, open-wheeled cars and perhaps high-performance GD cars than, let's say, it's obviously not an ideal NASCAR rim. This wheel is definitely built for cars that require faster and stronger movements than a larger wheel rim regardless of shape. The grips have a good feel in my hands and once in position, it's easy to maintain grip. The leather is smooth and there's very little feeling along that seam unless I try to feel for it with my hand. The leather grips do not have a lot of padding, but the shape of the wheel grips still allowed for it to be very comfortable for hours of driving. The overall stiffness of the wheel rim is really, really rigid. There's just no flexing that occurs even when pressing and pulling on the wheel. There's no twisting of the wheel when wrenching on the grips. It is very strong and is very well built. While driving, the operation of buttons is important and one of the great aspects of this style wheel is that there are an abundance of controls as well as many of them being within reach of your hands without removing them from the grips. In the case of the FSR wheel rim, I can easily operate the top three buttons on each side of the rim. I can also easily rotate the vertical rotary as well as push it in on the fly without removing a hand. In addition to that, I can operate the next middle buttons and the mini joysticks with that same ease. At this point, counting the joysticks as five functions, up, down, left, right, and push in, 
I have 24 mappable functions at my fingertips. With a simple pivot of my hands, I can operate the first face-mounted rotaries, but for the most part, I need to remove a hand to get the five rotaries and the final two buttons. The overall feeling of the buttons is pretty high quality, but I do personally prefer a stronger click sensation. The rotaries, all seven of them, feel very good. They have strong detents, as well as a strong feel and sound when turned. The metal caps and grooves also feel very good on my fingertips. The paddle shifters have a good position on the wheel rim. Despite being small, it's very easy to use any of my top three fingers on them. There is a good amount of resistance from the magnets, which does a great job of preventing accidental shifts. But when you do pull on the paddles to the point of release, it is a fast and pretty solid clunk as they finish their quarter inch of travel. The paddle shifters are very rigid like the rest of the wheel. There's no flex or wiggle, even when they're pulled beyond their intended travel. The secondary paddles, or levers, use a spring for resistance. They do move quite a bit easier than the shifters, and even at that half inch travel, you get a good amount of distance to use as a clutch or even a handbrake. You know, those moments where you might need 30%, 40, 50, 100% on demand. These levers are also very strong and can be easily activated with my pinkies or bottom two fingers. Another thing worth mentioning on the paddles, and this is true for all four of them, is that they have a nice gentle edge and feel good on my fingers with no sharp edges or corners. On a functionality level, this wheel worked out really, really well with so many controls, but here's the important part. With so many types of controls, with different labels, it made it easy to remember and to use their functions while driving. Add to that the comfort of the wheel and the absolute rock solid bulletproof feel of its construction and the FSR wheel rim really performs. Of course, when we're buying a sim racing steering wheel, we want it to look super cool. We want it to look high tech and awesome. But for me, when I'm testing a wheel, it really does come down to the functionality and the performance far more than the aesthetics. However, in the modern era where the wheels have gotten so fancy that we're using exotic materials like carbon fiber, we have fancy LED light strips or continuous light light strips, and now we're talking color displays and cool rotary knobs, all of those aesthetics actually add to the functionality of the wheel rim. It's no longer just about looking super cool. So let's talk about the overall looks and how that plays a role in the performance of the wheel rim. The FSR wheel rim is a very flashy looking steering wheel. Any educated eye can see the carbon fiber plate and knows it's real, not just a graphic. It's more than just the looks though. In my review of the GS wheel rim, I talked about the functionality of the programmable backlit buttons and how that actually allows me to remember their functions. To me, that is as important as giving them labels. I can make buttons that are sim related in one color, buttons that are car related in another color, and yet another color for communication. This really helps me on the fly and makes it look super cool as well. And if that isn't enough to help you remember, they even included those stickers so you could label all the buttons and dials to help your memory that much more. Now the biggest functional visual aspect of this wheel rim by far is that center display. The center display is run by the Moza Pithouse software, so you don't need any third party applications. The display is very clear color display and reading it can be done easily when looking at the screen. However, like any wheel mounted screen, you do need to look down from your racing screens to read it clearly. I really love that they gave you 15 pre-made layouts. For me, there are four or five of them that I like the best and being able to rotate through them on the fly in game was an added bonus. I also found that certain layouts were great for on track and that I could quickly switch to another during pit stops to get added information. In the end, the display worked well, but the on the wheel displays aren't for everybody. They can be hard to see or read on the fly as they're out of your driving you and they're expensive when added to a wheel and most of the information is available in the game on screen anyways. 
but you cannot argue how cool it is whether it's for you or not. In addition to the attention grabbing display, there is again the adjustable continuous light rev strip above the display. We have talked about this before on the CS and GS wheel rims and it is the same operation, the same color availability, and the same options in the software. It's a nice change from the very normal LED style that is 9 or 10 individual bulbs, but that constant light bar that is certainly different, but also a little bit more modern and cool. All of these visuals took an already highly functional wheel rim and gave it all the flashing lights and modern tech of the new era of racing. As you could hear or see in our footage, I really did enjoy using the Moza Racing FSR wheel rim, but to summarize our thoughts, let's go ahead and break it down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line. Starting off with the good, that being, it is a super awesome looking wheel rim. Full color display, 15 display layouts, change on the fly, feel like very high-end parts, buttons, dials, Button box eliminator. So many buttons to choose from. Programmable backlight colors of buttons. Dials can be left or right click or positional, game dependent. Very comfortable wheel. Super stiff, no twist, no flex. Magnetic paddles, feel great. Bonus clutch paddles or levers. Wireless, no wraparound cable. Customizable continuous color rev strip. Not entirely proprietary, USB direct. And now on to the not so good. And the first one is something that is a carryover or a common trait between this and the GS wheel rim. And that being the lower corners have a plastic hollow feel to them. Heavy wheel rim, total of wheel and quick release. More controls than my brain can remember. And now on to the bottom line. In my review process, I really do look to find as many flaws or areas that could be improved in our products to make that not so good part of our list. And I will say that over the years, as companies have gotten better and better at making gear, it has been harder and harder to find flaws with a lot of products that we see today. Now, granted, when you're spending three, four, five, six, a thousand, two thousand dollars on a wheel rim or a sim racing product, you can have pretty high expectations. Now, when we're looking at the not so good list, one of the things that comes to mind is that hollow feeling on the bottom corners. I will stand by that statement that the lower corners of the rim do feel plasticky and hollow when compared to the rest of the rim. It's not an issue, just something worth mentioning. And then when we talk about the weight of the wheel rim and call it heavy, and I think to myself, compared to what? Compared to wheels of yesterday where they're made of plastic and did weigh a fraction of this amount, but at today's standards, we're using automotive grade equipment, wheels that are strong enough or certainly built strong enough that you literally could put them in a real car and use them. I'm not saying you should. In fact, disclaimer here, don't use these wheel rims for the most part. There are exceptions to that rule in a real car but we are building to those standards and with that is going to come a heftier weight. But that's okay because this didn't happen until we had the horsepower or the Newton meter revolution of sim racing. Now it is very normal for a lot of sim racers to have a direct drive wheel and a wheel rim or a wheel base strong enough to carry a heavier wheel rim and not really have that become a negative aspect of the setup. So that's not so much of an issue anymore. And then obviously the more controls than I can remember, that is more of a shot at me than the wheel rim itself. So overall, the Moza Racing FSR wheel rim is a very, very cool little wheel rim. It is an expensive wheel rim, but it has a lot of features and a lot of functions built into it to match that price point. 
However, it is less expensive than a lot of wheel rims on the market with the same type of features that you see in the FSR wheel rim. So one other thing I do want to cover before we wrap up is the size of the wheel rim. This is 280 millimeters, which again is on the smaller side, even for open wheel cars. But just to give you an example, I do believe that a modern Formula One car uses only a 270 millimeter steering wheel. Now that's mostly because they only have so much space, more than that's what the driver would want. And I believe that most modern GT3 cars, which now run more of an open wheel style wheel rim, but they are larger, coming in at somewhere between 300 and 330 millimeters. And just for comparison's sake, the previous GS model was 300 millimeters wide. And speaking of the GS wheel rim and other ways that this one is actually different from that one is that little magic phone jack on the back. Now, I haven't been able to find a cable, but I do know that the purpose of that jack is to add that USB plug and play, meaning this wheel is no longer or about to be no longer proprietary, meaning that you could use it on any wheelbase in the world as long as you change your quick release from the back of this to what you're using on your wheelbase or change your wheelbase to an NRG style quick release. So that could be a great sign for the future coming out of Moza and maybe a little bit more available to every sim racer out there in the market. So I think I've told you everything that you need to know about the Moza Racing FSR wheel rim. If you need more information, you can find it from them yourself at mozaracing.com. And thank you for watching. Be sure to thumbs up if you like this show. Be sure to subscribe so you can get notified when our next review comes out. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.